Jared Wrights from the Ohio Center for Law Related Education. I really like the scarlet that I see. If it was a little more gray, uh, I'd be really happy. They don't get it. They don't get it. That's what I'm saying. I like the scarlet. And Kelly Blossom, who I have to say, is director of the Internet Journal Affairs. We are pleased to see you in front of the department today. Thank you so much. Yeah, you are. I'm Jacob Halo. I'm Dan Berger. Well, we're here today to um, discuss question number one. And um, we'd like to know your ideas about the following questions. Modern government has greatly extended its range, assuming responsibility for improving social conditions by regulating economic activity and providing a wide range of public services. This great expansion, expansion poses a major challenge to the very idea of constitutionalism, devised as commitments to limited government. Do you agree or disagree with this assertion by a British scholar? Why? What evidence can you offer to support your position? How would you explain the concept of constitutionalism? What can citizens do if and when they believe government is overstepping the bounds of constitutional government? The U.S. Constitution is seen by many as a revolutionary doctrine. It was written shortly after the end of the American Revolution, and the founders kept in mind their experiences with Britain whilst crafting it. This belief in limited government and the idea that men weren't angels, as seen in Federalist 51, greatly influenced the founders and resulted in a written constitution with certain enumerated powers. Over time, however, the government has become expected to be more active. This transformation, although supported by many people in the 1930s, as far as public debate today, it could threaten constitutionalism. Constitutionalism was a principle that the founders sought to achieve in crafting the U.S. Constitution. It can be defined as a supreme law by which the people establish and limit the powers of the government. The concept derives from the idea of rule of law, which is seen in the Magna Carta, and is the idea that the government is not above the law. Constitutionalism is, as such, an invaluable defense of a government becoming tyrannical. This principle is achieved in the Constitution in Article 6, which directly states that, quote, the Constitution shall be the supreme law of the land, end quote. This constitutional provision was utilized by John Marshall in Marbury v. Madison to justify another important limitation on government, judicial review. As written by Justice Marshall in the Marbury opinion, quote, an act of the legislative republic to the U.S. Constitution is void, end quote. However, as the power of the government expands beyond the framers' expectations in the words of the Constitution, the idea of constitutionalism
very difficult ideal to achieve and is constantly being challenged. Governments have a history of growing larger and larger over time. An overbearing government is what caused Americans to revolt and has also been exemplified in America's government. Without this principle of constitutionalism, it would be nearly impossible to maintain a non tyrannical government. The importance of constitutionalism cannot be overemphasized and with modern government would be exceedingly different without it. Thank you for your time and are now ready for follow -ups. Thank you for providing a very clear, well-organized response to the questions. But we have a few follow-up questions. <laughs> well, I heard someone uh, mention the concept of higher law. Uh, what is uh, the relationship between a constitutional government and that concept of higher law? The constitutional government, the constitution itself is typically higher law. This is seen in the U.S. as Article 6 clearly states that the law is the supreme law of the land. That was common in the Constitution when the government could basically break all laws and there would be no punishment for them. In Article 3 of the Constitution, we have this establishment of the Supreme Court, which the Supreme Court justices take oath to uphold the Constitution and protect it as higher law. How do we know what, what higher law it is? Sometimes democracies make mistakes. The majority can sometimes be wrong. This is clearly seen throughout civil rights movements where the majority was trying to oppress the minority. The minority was trying to fight back. So what if, what specific examples can any of you provide of when either the state or national government has made a mistake and there's been an appeal to higher law? The Catholic court is Some issues that you mentioned are really debatable. Uh, what kind of skills do Americans need to grapple with these issues that you mentioned that are so debatable? And, I, and when you talk about, you know, No Child Left Behind, the Affordable Care Act. Americans as a whole need to be ready to act about something that are unconstitutional. Judicial branch as a whole is passive government. They cannot just decide that they want to declare on law unconstitutional. They have to wait for need to also know their rights so they know when their rights are being violated in order in order to bring them to the courts. I also believe that they need to know the provisions of the law so they know what they're speaking out against. Do you think, you know, we, you mentioned the division of power between the national government and the state governments as being a part of the limited government that we have in the United States. Do you think the balance between the powers of the national government and the powers of the state governments are you comfortable with where we're at currently with that balance, or do you think the national government has become too powerful vis-a-vis -vis the, the states? Some may argue that the national government has become too powerful with the passage of the Affordable Care Act, which with the court case Stimulus v. Hobby Lobby, it's been seen that having a company have to give out contraception to their, to their employees, which goes against their religion, 
is too power, that making the Darwin too powerful. You said some people. What about you? What do you think? Do you think you're a citizen? Do you think that the that the, uh, the the federal government's become too powerful? I believe that in some cases the federal government has become too powerful, which in the court, in the instance of Hobby Lobby, that making uh, people get their health care plan because of um, making them get health care if they don't have it, and make, if they don't have it, they get taxed, and it can be against their religion, then it violates the free exercise clause. What about No Child Left Behind? Are you comfortable with uh, the government? Uh, uh, federal government inter intervening in, in education? Education is a very important matter that needs to be probably addressed. If education is basically what prepares the child for their ability to function and develop and get a job, the state are not going to do enough job with education, then the national government should be able to pass an education reform that allows for the United States to benefit as a whole and allows the citizens or future citizens and the future nation to be able to get a good education. In the passage of Race to the Top, we saw this where the federal government would give money to the schools that have a uh, an improved, have good, good education for their students. Thank you very much.